Thank you for doing it with me. You're welcome. This interview is about some concerns I have about not really correctly emphasizing the importance of a kind of, do we want to call it secrecy, confidentiality? I think confidentiality is a good word. Yes. To put it very simply, the method we use depends on using a frequency against some entities. Bacteria and viruses are capable of changing their frequency pretty much at will. If our demeanor in some way tells them that we're about to attack them, we shouldn't be too surprised if they don't immediately respond by moving to a different frequency so they're safe from my attack. And of course that's what the whole process is about as far as I'm concerned. I want to destroy them. There is more to it of course. But I don't think I've made this point clearly enough. And I asked Ellie along because she has some things to contribute that I believe are different from what I do. And at the same time, add significantly to it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It goes back to the fact that while I had I was really confident that the method would work, and yet over and over again it sort of did, and in the end it didn't. I can't tell you how many times I have completely eliminated diphtheria and then saw it come back a couple months later. That's my own body. There is something wrong with what I was doing. By now I'm pretty much convinced that what I was doing wrong was warning the target. So the whole process basically failed. Now at this point do you want to discuss, bring up the way we used to do it, or...? Well, what we used to do is take, look, go look through our list of parasites, viruses, bacteria, small little worms, and large, large worms like, what do they call them? Tapeworms? Tapeworms, yeah. And we had the list and the frequencies that Holder Clark discovered, and we had it all organized, and we were targeting certain things, and we were writing it down, and that's what we were going to do. And while we were in that process, of course, we didn't know at the time that these little entities are conscious and are listening, until we read the book by, what's his name? Bruce Lipton. <laughs> Bruce Lipton. <laughs> Biology of Belief. Biology of Belief. Yes. And then all of a sudden we realized, yes, our thoughts create our bodies and what our self-talk creates our bodies. And I am a perfect example of that because the way I carry myself, some people think that I carry all the royal blood of all the European royalty families in me. And actually what I did as a teenager, I read an essay by a German poet named Friedrich von Schiller, and he wrote an essay on the critique of Greek art and Greek statues. And that these statues 
seemed to express a grace and dignity that came from within. And I was really impressed by that essay. And I said, that's what I would like to express in the way I carry myself. And my chiropractor seems to think that I'm carrying myself like royalty. No, I'm carrying myself like the Greek gods. That Friedrich von Schiller describes in his essay on grace and dignity. And I thought what I would like to express in my being is grace and dignity. Mm -hmm. And that as far as I'm concerned, beauty has to be from within. And that is something that Schiller was talking about also, that the beauty seems to come from within these statues. I have never seen these Greek statues. I've only seen pictures of them. And he is right. There is a certain dignity and something that comes from within that the artists were able to do with their carving and their expression that they when they when they carved these beautiful statues out of rock. I mean it's really amazing what the Greek artists did. And so I'm carrying myself like that. Right now I'm slumping. But I would like to sit straight and have straight shoulders and you know Oh, graceful and dignified. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and so that's how I walk around. And I've done that ever since I thought about it when I was 16. And when I was in college in Baltimore, my colleagues, my the other classmates, thought I was really kind of unapproachable and they thought I was a little bit snobbish. No, I was actually very shy. I didn't talk much, but when people got to know me, it was a different thing, and um, I had a lot of nice friends. I still communicate with my college roommate after 50 years. Of, we, th we graduated in 1958, and we're still communicating by emails and send each other interesting stories and jokes and keep in touch. So that should tell you something. <laughs> it's cool. It is. Do you have a sexual relationship with your college roommate? Well, actually not very much anymore. No. It's been a long time. Right. Yes. In the healing work that I'm using as a basis for these discussions. Perhaps the most important statement to make is much of what went on when we were using that book to look up a particular target entity and various other things turned out it was giving away secrets that we couldn't afford to give away because then the target would change frequency and our effort would fail. If we draw the obvious conclusion from it, my conclusion is the safest thing to do is when I have a session there are only certain pieces of information that are allowed. One, the frequency in all its detail. Basically that's it. Nothing else about the, the, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, what I want to accomplish, all of the rest, strictly forbidden, because it gives away the reason, and that destroys the results. Now, remember I'm talking here only about bacteria and viruses. And frequencies are useful for other things as well. 
One of them is toxins. Did you want to speak about that? Well, I like the way you ask the toxin if it wants to be in your body. Right. And what is the answer you get? I did this first with mercury, which was put into my body with mercury amalgam fillings in my childhood. And when I first asked it how it felt about being in my body, I got this very anguished no answer. It was like being trapped in a prison in which everything that you wanted to do and you wanted to do it for good reason. It was, in this environment, terribly dangerous, and everybody was trying to trap you and prevent you from doing it. And I realized that this was a very general case. It wasn't just that one toxin. As far as I could tell, it was every one of them that, were in, that was in my body. They were all trapped in a prison. And in each case, it was a prison not of their own choosing. They didn't want to be there, not in that form. Mercury wants to be in my body, but always as part of a tightly bound compound in which the chemistry has been defined by the compound, not just by the element. And the mercury problem that I'm talking about here is the raw metal, mercury, the shiny liquid stuff, which should, which in fact is a terrible poison. In particular, I think there was a comment about toxins being very dangerous to the kidneys. Mm -hmm. I think, what did you, you, what, what did you want to say about that? Well, that you could not really um, just flush out the mercury either in its, in the, in the state it is in, in the body because it would destroy the kidneys. It's too dangerous. Yes. And this, again, is a good reason to use an excited state for the mercury so that it can be safely collected and excreted from the body. So it's not just mercury, it's many of these toxins. We need the excited states for that. Tell me about the uh, asbestos that you got rid of in your body. Lord. <coughs> When I was a child, it was too dangerous to run. I couldn't do it. There was a pain in my chest. I knew it was there. I knew it would kill me if I kept doing it. I learned to do short walking. As I was able very slowly over a period of years, and it was only my teenage years that I walked my first mile certainly couldn't run. Gradually, gradually building up strength. The I was convinced that there was asbestos in my lungs, in my heart, and in several internal organs. In the end I believe that's gone. I certainly play a lot of a very active tennis probably more active than most people at age 75. But in order to do that, I have had to use frequencies. In fact, I believe in this case, the asbestos itself was raised to an excited state and held there for a while because in that excited state, it was fairly stable and it was almost a viscous liquid, not a spike, so what the ground state asbestos is, which was actually very simple for the body to carry away with the white blood cells. So in fact, this method does work. 
Now, would it work for you? I bet it would work for just about all of us, except I'm being warned not to give my frequency away. And I'm being told the reason not to give it away is because for the listener, it would almost certainly be wrong. They are These frequencies are all different for each of us. What is not said about this chemistry is it is very individual. So the best I can do is say this is the way I make it work and it seems to me it ought to be possible for you to do just as well or better. The key here is that toxins play a very strange role. The human body is not designed to have them in the body. The chemistry is wrong. The electronics is wrong. They're poisonous often. The body can't even excrete them safely. But if the toxin is willing to give you a frequency and you use it to produce the excited state of the toxin, that is, or could be safe, certainly I'm not acting the same as I acted as a child. A child who was had pains in my heart, couldn't breathe, and could barely walk a dis fairly short distance. Now I'm running all over the tennis court. What's the difference? I asked the asbestos in my body how to free it from the prison it was in, and it was delighted to give me a frequency that would work. And I'm hearing, in fact, that it told me about it once, and then after that, my body asked me for permission to do things behind the scenes. And there have been a number of other instances that my body took care of, and Ellie says also. The asbestos is gone. It took the better part of three months of behind the scenes, high, frequ high frequency stuff to take care of it. I knew nothing about it. But my body had complete permission, because I gave it permission to do this without my consciousness being involved. This comment needs to be made. Your body knows so much more about what to do here than you can even imagine, and asking your body to make you the supervisor of what is going on in this context, frankly, it's a recipe for disaster. You can't do it. The best thing to do is give the body permission to do what it wants to do, because it knows what needs to be done and just let it do the job. Does that make sense? Yeah. The frequencies are a way of allowing the body to declare in the presence of these foreign toxins a kind of independence It's not tied down to the chemical, biological chemistry that makes it so difficult 
for the body to get rid of these foreign <coughs> things. With the right frequency, <coughs> the body has the ability to do good elimination, good safe elimination. It's a kind of independence of this chemistry. I think that's very important. I don't think either Ellie or I would be alive today if we hadn't done that. Do you agree? I don't know what to say about that. But, uh, we are here. We are here. And we've been through all this stuff. Yeah. And used with your genius this high frequency generators that you built mm -hmm. and asking questions and meditating on the questions and keeping asking and asking the body and asking spirit and listening to spirit and so we use everything not just the physical we use the metaphysical also I think that's true yeah yes I do I'd like to make one more comment. We do use these frequencies pretty frequently. Right now, for example, the boxes are right there, they're plugged in, the antennas are connected, and they're operating. But if you came into the room, there wouldn't be any feeling there wouldn't be any warning. Who knows about this? Simply the particular organisms that the body decided to target. And I don't know what they are. In fact, maybe not all of them are organisms. Maybe some of them are toxins. In addition, there are also the military weapons that everybody has been talking about. I've seen it on the internet. Again, another example in which I have no conception of exactly what we're doing here. All I know is I have four boxes. That means I'm going to ask for four frequencies, one for each box. I'm simply going to set, put the frequency into the box and make the program run. And as far as I'm concerned, my job is done and I just wait until my body says it's finished. we got into this, but you started talking in the other interview about C and G. <laughs> oh, the sound, sound acoustic healing. Yes. And we, we have a book by Jean Berlier, who is a psychotherapist. He's at the Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan, and he wrote about acoustic healing that he does in his job as a therapist at the hospital and he's very successful with what he's doing. And he's talking about the sound of C, the, per the perfect fifth, and he has the sounds of the universe in his book, the frequencies of certain moon, the moon and the sun and the stars, and, and you know, we sing the song Deep Peace, which is based on an, an ancient Gaelic prayer a blessing from the ancient Gaelic people and we sing it in church before our service and we sang it at the interfaith concert where our choir was participating as a fundraiser for the interfaith coalition which provides services for the homeless in Bellingham and each year we participate in the choir that gives a concert and raises funds for the homeless and the audience was just, they were thrilled with what we were singing. They were so relaxed and calm and quiet all of a sudden, you know, their shoulders, they just sank into their chairs and relaxed. 
and I know that I'm singing the perfect fifth all the time from C to G. <laughs> <laughs> that is healing for the uh, for the nervous system. So it calms the nerves. It really do. And one of my choir friends said, you know, I noticed the audience relaxing, and I said, yes, you know why. We have so many C's and G's. <laughs> the bass may be singing C and I'm singing the high G, so we make the perfect fifth all the time in the song and we, we blast it out into the audience <laughs> and everybody relaxes and feels good. I like to play it at home in our living room mm -hmm. and take a nap while it's going. <laughs> and I come out refreshed. We both do. Yeah. I'll cut it off here. I hope it's been useful. Thanks for listening.